It's about 37 degrees out here, which is pretty cold weather to ride in, but compared to the rest of the world and the country right now, it's probably not that bad. Well, this used to be a field over here, but now it's a construction site. So, naturally, it's my construction site. Well, what's going on today? So, it's about time for an oil change, so I thought I would do a little more than that. And I uh, figured I could probably change the right crankcase cover gasket while I'm at it. Because you got to drain the oil to get to that if you want to remove that cover. So like last year I was leaving a camping area and I noticed dirt collecting on the seam of the right crankcase cover gasket. And I asked people on the internet why that would be failing and if I should replace it. And most people said no, it's not a big deal, it happens. And I was like, ah, alright, it makes sense. And I'm pretty sure I've seen that happening before. But earlier this year I went out, uh, I had a guy contact me and about selling me some parts with some tires. And one of the parts was the crankcase cover gasket. Coincidentally, <laughs> long story short, <laughs> I have that thing. And so I figure, if I'm going to do the oil, might as well just put that gasket on and uh, kind of go over the procedure. So that's what I'm going to do today. But first, I'm going to ride around this dirt and warm my bike up. That's literally what I'm doing right now. Alright, well I'm hoping this engine is warm enough. I like to get it nice and hot before I drain the oil, just to make sure. Oh, that reminds me! I'm going to do a Blackstone oil test on this on this oil. And if you don't know what Blackstone is, it's this company that for 30 bucks will analyze your oil for you and tell you what the levels of like metals and stuff are. And it helps you kind of determine whether the uh, whether the oil is protecting your engine or if you're or if you're not protecting your engine. It lets you know if there's pieces of aluminum in there and uh, stuff like that. So I don't know if I have the bottle yet. I gotta go check the mail. I asked them to send me uh, the sample kit so I could actually collect the oil but uh, I don't know if I got it so shouldn't be on that tight This is never a clean job. All right, well, according to this manual, the rear brake pedal has to come off, and there's some other little oil oil thing. This comes off, and the brake lever comes off? Oh yeah, it's in the way. It's in the way. This whole cover right here is what I want to pull, because basically of that, which is nothing to be worried about, but since I have the part, so let's figure out how this comes off and then I'll pull this bad boy and we can uh, we can swap that gasket. We've got all these bolts taken off. It is worth noting that this one, this one, and this one were a little bit loose, which is probably why that was actually seeping to begin with. <clears throat> but we're already this far along, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish taking it off. Took a photo of the order of these bolts because two of them are long bolts, and you could very easily get that mixed up if you've got you know all your hardware in a pile. Give it a couple love taps. It's on some studs, so you want to make sure you don't, uh, I believe they're like dowels and they can come out. So you want to make sure you don't lose those. This K 
catching, I think, because this is really tight to the top of the case. And there's a little clip over here that it's hard to move out of the way. And I can feel the gasket. That already separated. Always moves really slowly. Oh, the gasket actually broke. All right, there you have it. That is the inside of the right side crankcase. It looks beautiful in there. So here's the gasket that I'm replacing. It just chipped a part of my hand there, but there's half of it is still left on the side of the engine here. Huh, kind of glad I'm replacing it now. Well, let's bring this over to the bench. The razor, you want to just gently pop this stuff off. Because when you put your new gasket on, this surface has to be perfectly smooth. Otherwise, you may not get a good seal. These are the dowels I was talking about. Those are loose in here, so don't, uh, don't allow those to fall out. Let's open up the new gasket. Okay, be super careful with this thing. Uh, yep, just like that. Oh well, this is in pieces. Decide I'm gonna go ahead and just pull the clutch off because I want to measure. I want to measure what the thickness of the plates are because in this manual here it gives me the service limit for the clutch discs. And since I have access to it now, um, I figure now is a pretty good time just to take a look at that and see where it is because I've got 17,000 miles on the bike. I don't ride it very hard, but I'm just wondering, you know where these things are at in their wear life. I also don't do wheelies or anything. So it's not like that clutch is getting abused. always wondered what your clutch looks like. This is it. It's a series of these little friction discs with these stainless steel discs in between. Then as you actuate your clutch, these things separate, somehow disengage your, uh, your transmission. I'm not actually sure how that part works, but through having a series of these things, you can see right here, there's several of them. <laughs> um, it allows you to have a smooth clutch feel and uh, Anyway, these things are the parts that wear out because these little pads that are in here, these little pads that are on the side of the disc actually get thinner as you use it over time. That will actually cause your clutch to stop, you know, holding the power as you give it power. It'll actually start to slip. Basically all you do then is buy new plates. And as you can see, I just took the panel off with, you know, in about an hour, you know, but that includes messing with cameras and stuff. Let's measure this and see where we stand as far as where goes. It says here that new should be 0.115 to 0.121 inches in thickness. The service limit is 0.1 inches. So look at this analog caliper here. So let's take a look. Uh, we are at 0.11 for that plate. That is almost at the service limit. That is at 0.11. That one is also at 0.11. So these are the first three plates. I'm assuming the rest of them are pretty consistent. But uh, I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I pulled those off because, I mean, that is actually quite close to needing to be replaced. All right. So maybe they'll give you an idea of where your where your clutch will be at if you ride, you know, modestly, and you've got 17,000 miles on your bike. So anyway, let's go and put these back on.
Hey, don't ever get oil in your tires. It's probably not a good thing. It's probably worth noting here in the manual that it says the recommended engine oil viscosity for above 100 degrees Fahrenheit is 10W40. I'm using 15W40, um, partially because that's what that's the closest to it that Shell Rotella has. Anything higher than 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it actually recommends 20W50, depending on how you want to interpret this. Because here's the end of the chart, but one of the arrows goes way past the end of the chart. <laughs> I think 15W40 is actually probably appropriate for the, uh, the climate that I'm riding in. back together and there aren't any leaks and that was uh that was actually quite easy <laughs> it is worth noting that you're going to need cotter pins to put the uh brake pedal back on so i had some laying around but if you don't do a lot of work on cars or motorcycles you're not going to have cotter pins laying around I'm gonna go power wash this thing. Let's uh, let's recap what we did. Drain the oil. I pulled the right side crankcase cover off because the gasket appeared to be leaking, seeping small amounts of oil. I did find that the bolts around the area that was leaking were actually loose, so it's possible I could have just tightened those up. But I had a gasket to put on it, so I went ahead and just pulled the whole thing off. Found that the uh, the old gasket was actually cracking and falling apart so it's probably not a bad thing that I uh, replaced it. However this bike is only a 2012 it's not exactly that old and it's got 17,000 miles on it. Um, I don't really know I don't know what the life of a gasket normally is but it's, it's generally rare that you have to change those types of things unless your motorcycle is pretty old but while the cover was off I took the clutch plates out and I measured their thickness to see where they're uh, how worn they were and it appears that the next time I change my oil um, I'm probably gonna have to put new clutch plates in. Uh, I mean the clutch itself feels fine. You could probably keep riding past the wear limit, but I mean I tend to maintain this bike like meticulously because when I go out out in the woods uh, I, I need to depend on it. I cannot have it breaking down. I cannot have problems especially with something that's that simple to repair. So I'll probably put new plates in it the next time I change the oil and we'll cover that I guess. One of the things I, I kind of wanted to make a point about was that this is not difficult work to do. And I think for a lot of people who are just now getting into motorcycles, you're not used to working on your own stuff. And uh, a lot of this can be really intimidating. And while you need to make sure that you're thorough and organized and that this stuff goes back together correctly and that you don't break things, it's not difficult. I mean, I started at 9, and it's or I started at 8, and now it's 10.50. Uh, that includes the vlog that I went out and filmed before I started working on the bike. That includes all the camera stuff. And now I'm going to go power wash it. Then I'm going to go grocery shopping. So it's like, I got this done on a Sunday morning. It's pretty easy to do. I didn't have any problems. I even figured out how worn my clutch is. Something to think about. I mean, if you, uh, if you're getting into motorcycles, you generally are required to work on them. There's too much simple maintenance that it just isn't worth paying someone to do. You know, like it'll take... 20 minutes if that to change your oil so why would you pay someone it's just it, it gets silly unless I don't know unless you have a bike that needs to be dealer serviced or something 